Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about some brand new QNAPs. I want to talk about the 73A series, something I've already sort of talked about a little bit in the last couple of weeks but I really want to go into more detail now about kind of the structure of this new series from QNAP. We're going to start to see a lot of releases in their portfolio be updated in the next few weeks and one of the earliest ones we saw is that 73 series. Follow up to the previous 73 generation in 4 bay, 6 bay and 8 bay this new New series the TS 473A, the TS 673A, and the TS 873A are a new generation of system devices. They are utilizing that Ryzen that we've talked about before, that V1500 quad core 2.2 gigahertz processor, 64 bit in architecture x86. It means that we are looking at a CPU that, although not graphically embedded, will provide a lot of support in things like virtualization, in things like surveillance, and graphical handling of files. Nowhere near to the ability, of course, to an embedded graphical CPU, an Intel Core, a Pentium, or a Celeron, or whatever. But in general power utilization, it still brings a lot to the party. And in 2020, we saw this CPU in pretty much all of the SMB, small, medium, business level devices, as well as a number of newer generation QNAPs as well. So this four, six, and eight bay device have got a lot in common with its predecessor, but it has to be said that a lot of stuff have been bolted into this device that it's really interesting to see what QNAP are considering SMB grade desktop solutions right now. I don't have the full details on pricing, it has to be said. I do think that's all going to come out relatively soon. But let's really break down into this system beyond that CPU. So before we talk about hardware anymore, there is one very key detail for anyone that's been following QNAP for a lot, uh, a lot of time. Uh, particularly in the last year, year and a half, that is very relevant on this device, and that is that this system does include ZFS as a file system of choice. At boot, you can choose whether you want to use QTS, which is the EXT4 version of their uh, software and graphical user, graphical user interface and services, or you can choose to utilize QUTS Hero, their ZFS system that's got all of the advantages of ZFS with the removal of the volume layer there directly on a storage pool along with all the advantages of course in compression, deduplication uh, and just improvements in RAID resilvering, RAID resync and RAID building in general taking minutes not hours. Now the system arrives with 8 gig of memory by default, a single 8 gig module of DDR4 inside not ECC standard one stick of eight gig module memory inside there so not all of the features and functionality of zfs are available straight off the bat you will have to get to at least 16 gig to take advantage of some of those compressive and deduplica uh, deduplication advantages inherent to zfs but the majority of other zfs services are available off the bat i mentioned eight gig of memory this system supports up to 64 gig of memory the four the six and the 8 bay across two slots. So again, a couple of 32 gig DDR4, uh, one in each slot there. You're looking at a huge amount of memory for virtualization, for surveillance, and just general business level file access. And again, that's whether you want to use EXT4 or ZFS, which is included, no additional charge, none of that other stuff there with a license or any of that nonsense. It's all included internally. That's already a big step up over its predecessor. But in terms of hardware architecture, there are a number of other improvements as well. Not just that it's the standard SATA base, there are four, six, and eight bays at the front, all of course supporting the latest 18 and indeed 20 TB hard drives. But on top of that, you've also got M2 NVMe slots inside. You've got two NVMe slots inside that can be used for raw storage or caching, something again ZFS really takes advantage of intelligently. But of course, if you use them for raw storage, it's worth highlighting that this system is really making the most of the PCIe lanes open to it from that CPU. And the two NVMe lanes inside, although there's two of them, they are PCIe Gen 3 times one. That means those NVMe's are only really gonna put out a thousand megs each. So although a thousand megs is still a great little performance there, and if you use it for raw storage, that is a fantastic benchmark. Bear in mind that you're gonna be able to get away with slightly different 
uh, NVMe SSDs and not just go straight for Gen 3 times 4 SSDs. Some savings can be made there and performance can be leveraged. In terms of network and external connectivity, this system arrives by default with two 2.5 GBE ports that of course can be link aggregated to supply up to a potential 5 GBE with connected supported devices and of course they are backwards compatible as well. There's no HDMI out and non-GPU enabled CPU prevents that. There's no 10 GBE, but there is a great degree of expandability with two PCIe Gen 3 times 4 upgrade slots. So again, two PCIe upgrade slots, each of which supplies up to 4,000 megs connectivity between the card and the board. So we are talking dual port 10 G cards, a you know 25 and 40 GBE fiber cards, and of course, I don't know if you guys noticed yesterday, but upgrade cards from QNAP. Um, they've announced a new range of QM2 upgrade cards. There is a dual port 10 GBE and NVMe cache card arriving that, again, isn't uh, bottlenecked by PCIe Gen 2. It's straight into PCIe Gen 3 there across multiple versions. And this newer generation of cards from QNAP are going to pr provide a huge array of improved um, upgrade cards for systems just like this one. And of course, this system also supports a small range of GPU cards that can go inside those slots. But bear in mind, this isn't like a PCIe Gen 3 times 16 upgrade card slot that we've seen in rack mounts and in the likes of the 7.2 series. But it's still a few options available to you there for non-additional power GPU cards, although the compatibility list is a little thin there. In terms of U um, USB ports, once again, this isn't a KBM box. There's no HDMI, but there's still a large array of USB devices that are supported. Straight away off the bat, there's, of course, QNAP's own range of expansion devices that utilize both USB 3.1 Gen 1 and Gen 2, so 5 and 10 GPE. Um, expansion boxes with a new range of expansions being announced from QNAP very, very shortly that we talked about before. On top of that, there are a myriad of peripheral devices from third parties as well as first parties to add network interfaces all the way up to 5 GBE from QNAP and more supported by this device. With the device arriving with three USB um, Gen 2 uh, Gen uh, 2 times 2 port so again three of those usb ports are 10 gigabits per second usb there so for backups or expandability that is a huge advantage there's also weirdly a usb 3.2 uh, gen 1 port that is a type c which seems really odd but nevertheless it's still great to have that element of expandability the system also arrives with a 250 watt psu internally and of course as mentioned earlier on although it does have 8 gig of memory by default not only would you have to consider upgrading it to get that extra performance, but if you are upgrading it, it's worth highlighting this system, although it doesn't have uh, error code correction ECC memory by default, it certainly will support it. But that is pretty much this new Fort 6, 6 and 8 bay device that is arriving. Yes, it's not quite as, you know, snazzy. Snazzy, what an old person word. It's not quite as graphically enabled as the TVS 7.3 series we saw before and this is more of a follow-up to the non-GPU uh, embedded variant of this AMD series but still nevertheless this is a very confident entry from QNAP into that SMB series of devices for true throughput on day one and a tremendous amount of expandability whether you go for the four or the six or the eight bay overall. Do go to the link in the description where we've broken down more information about noise generation, about power consumption, and more on these devices. And of course, a full breakdown of QUTS, Hero, and ZFS advantages on this system and in general. So do go down there. If you wanna learn more, click subscribe. If you enjoyed the video, bang that like button. It really, really helps. And otherwise, I will see you on the next video.